Ooh, it's gonna be a good one tonight. Y'all definitely wanna stick around. We got some very special guests tonight. Show starts in one minute. <laughs> and welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight's special guests, Bazooka Joe and Tigger. And now, give it up for your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, Tito Bonito! <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of the Tito Bonito Show. I am the Cuban Missile Crisis of your life, Tito Bonito, and I am here to basically audition every week to have my own late night talk show. Um, but I digress, we're gonna have a fun time tonight, y'all. We have male burlesque mega superstars, Bazooka Joe. <sighs> wait, 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 I can do that for y'all really quick. Uh, Bazooka Joe, and we also have the incredible, iconic, first ever Mr. Exotic World, Tigger. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. It's going to be such a good episode. I believe those two are partying a little bit right now, so we are going to be all through New York, Chicago, and LA right now. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to make sure that I shout out, uh, if you want to support me, you can enjoy some soft core art. On my OnlyFans, it's only $5 a month. Go check that shit out. It's a good-ass time. Uh, also, we have the Pansy Craze Peep Show, and that's going to happen on September 27th on Twitch. It has a crazy lineup, including Jeez Louise, Frankie Fictitious, Redbone, Coco Lamar, Willie LeCue, and a slew of other performers. Uh, and please make sure you join us on Twitch. It's going to be on the Princess Forever channel. And it, I guarantee you it's going to be a good ass time. I do also want to take a little bit of a moment right now to acknowledge the passing of Associate uh, Justice of the Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We just found out that a little while ago. And I just wanted to share because I always bring up this burlesque routine. Um, that was inspired by RBG, the notorious RBG. So we're showing some love right now. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, obviously we all know is a champion of gender equality. And there is a burlesque act that's performed by Hyacinth Lee as RBG. And she does it to uh, Shaka Khan's I'm Every Woman. And it's amazing. There's actually no nudity in the act, but it is vaudeville is shit and it's burlesque so anytime people are trying to get into burlesque and believe that it has just one way of doing it i always mention this act because it just blew my mind when i first saw it and i loved it it's so good you can watch it on youtube just search up hyacinth lee i'll actually put a link to the video in the description when this goes on igtv and youtube later so check the comments to see that video but it is a great time so we do want to say rest in peace to somebody who has uh fought so so hard for gender equality for not only women but also a lot of others that have been um not prioritized in the american uh system so the world is a little bit sadder today but we hope to have a great time tonight just to kind of enjoy the fact that we can live in the moment and you know if it's the end of days y'all let's go out with a motherfucking bang you know what i'm saying uh, so, without any further ado, that is my first five minutes. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions for any of the performers in the show tonight, please make sure to put that in the question mark box right at the bottom. And it is a live show, so unfortunately I can't hear y'all cheering, but if you throw some hearts, click those hearts, and that'll act like an applause. Also, I do want to shout out the fact that we are shooting today, or my day himself is shooting, in uh, Ooh La La Dance Studios in San Diego. So um, 
Shout out to the Ooh La La Dance Academy and the Ooh La La Review that has been helping me through uh, this journey that we call uh, crazy ass shit. Thank you so much. Also, uh, hey everybody, hey everybody. Um, I just want to show some love to y'all, but when I tell you that these two special guests this week, or this week, uh, have been a huge inspiration to me throughout my burlesque career. Uh, I started burlesque 10 years ago in October. 10 years! Uh, and this next artist was the first, one of the first three male burlesque performers that I ever saw live. Uh, it was amazing story. Jeez Louise actually took me to it. Uh, it was a show at the Subterranean, and this performer was performing with two others. Their group name was the Stage Door Johnnies, and they are the shit. Called them the male TLC of burlesque. Uh, which one's left there? And this performer, the first two, Ray Gunn and uh, Jed Adore, were both very, you know... They just, my vibe was not that. I'm not, I don't appear, I accidentally am sexy is what I like to say. But uh, this performer just oozed comedy, oozed confidence, and it was something that I really wanted to uh, represent when I started performing. So this person is a huge inspiration to me. And actually one of the last times I saw this person, I was in this very studio creating our Batman and Robin act. So please, without any further ado, from Chicago, Illinois, cold ass Chicago, Give it up for the incredible, the iconic bazooka motherfucking Joe, y'all. Mm, give it, give me that, daddy. Hey! Hi, can you, can you hear me all right? I can hear you, daddy. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Bam! You look so handsome. Thank you. From what you just saw like five minutes ago? <laughs> I'm going to turn off the comments really quick so we can look at your beautiful face throughout the pod, uh, throughout the interview. But if you all love you some Bazooka Joe, make sure you Venmo Bazooka some money. All right, y'all, because these are trying <laughs> times. How you doing, Bazook? Good, good. Uh, dealing with, yeah, dealing with the news. Um, thank you for mentioning that earlier. Um, and then here, happy to be with you. It's been a very long time since we've been together and so much has happened in, in the middle of that. So really, really, really glad that you asked me to be a part of this. Of course, I, you, I, like, no, you know, I love to brag about how amazing I think you are, but it was actually, I believe, like, this week, last year that I last saw you in Chicago. One full year ago. One Can you believe that it's been a whole year? It's crazy. It's mind-boggling. Like, this, usually I'm like, the years feel like they take a long time because I can remember everything that's happening, but this year is just some weird blur. <laughs> yeah it's a nice break i guess it also simultaneously feels like no time has passed but then like so much time has passed seriously and, the, and and little has happened in that year at the same time be true and actually you were one of my favorite memories of last year because you and i performed together at dtla proud shout yeah. out we performed batman and robin <laughs> And Which let me tell y'all, y'all have not seen it yet because it needs to be presented. Proximity. Say that again? Kissing scene. <laughs> so we have to be able to do that without masks on. Listen, you know, the funny thing is uh, we still have to have masks on. We just are going to hide our identities with them. We're okay. not them out, you know? <laughs> Like we're still gonna, y'all. If y'all not have seen the Batman and uh, Robin act, you better pray for the end of days to not happen because this motherfucker carries me. We do it dirty dancing style, <laughs> lifts and all, lifts and all. And anyone that can carry my two hundred pound fat Cuban ass in the air is a god. <laughs> it's a fucking god. So easy. You make it so easy. I love that you say that you are a fucking charmer and that is literally like if y'all want to know what my brand of burlesque is, it's Bazooka Joe. <laughs> How did you get into burlesque Bazooka Joe anyway? Uh, we actually all, um, Ray, Jet and I actually got into it all sort of by accident. Uh, Hot Toddy, who was the 2009 king of burlesque, basically he put a, a back call out um, and was like, hey, I need some people who might be interested in this. And the three of us were the only ones who responded to this sort of like Chicago wide casting call. And he was like, okay, you're in. And we, in two weeks, we had to have an act. 
a photo shoot and uh, a persona name, like everything all put to, like costuming, everything put together in two weeks for our very first show. And it was like, what? Like, what is happening? And we didn't know anything about anything. And we didn't know any names. And we didn't know who, you know, Tigger and Dirty. And we had we had just met Michelle Lamour. Uh, so it was sort of like sinking in a little bit. But aside from that, we were like completely like just, okay, it sounds like something fun to do. And that was it. What if, uh, cause as men joining this, cause that's funny, actually really quick and I'll get back to that. But Hot Toddy tried to do that again after you guys were like the shit. Mm -hmm. And I remember I auditioned for it and he was like, you're literally the only person that I like in this entire audition. So yeah. he actually gave me the idea of being a boy scout in an act. He didn't give me like the whole thing, but he was like, all I can figure is that you're pitching a tent. <laughs> and I was like, it's fucking that's brilliant. So that's how, when I moved away from Chicago, I knew that I at least had that. So shout out to Hot Toddy, who is the fucking jam. Yeah. Uh, but as men jumping into a scene like burlesque, because especially the way that it is very female empowerment now, what kind of, uh, did you feel like you had any struggles kind of uh, owning your names and like owning your presence in this scene? Or has it been pretty No, absolutely. Chill? We've always, we've always thought, like all three of us, and, um, have thought that like we have to work twice as hard to prove our worth in this and not ride on being a novelty and not ride on being like the the token male, but like really, really step up our games and and really think like if you know, if we were our female counterparts, whatever, like would this be good enough? And like our costumes had to be better and our um acts had to be more polished and you know, like we really, really had to like make sure that we were putting in the work and the energy to step up and even meet the base level of what the what the rest of the burlesque world was already doing. And that and that's a great way of saying it because I know you guys said that also in one of the documentaries you're featured in where you guys uh, put yourselves out there as counterparts to female performers. And it does really feel like each of you bring something different. Like you are the perfect like three emotions of like the perfect man, like three types of perfect man just rolled up into a fucking group. Oh, thank you. Sorry, my my phone, my iPhone 5 is slowly dying, so. Listen, iPhone 5, Bazooka Joe needs tips to get a better phone, y'all, so please <laughs> Venmo that motherfucker right now. Not iPhone 5, I still have an old iPod. Um, I Who hurt you? <laughs> So what was your first, first, first act? Was Speed Racer the first one you ever came up with, or was it more? No, my very first act was a really ill-fated fan dance. Uh -huh. It was a nude illusion fan dance. So all I was wearing the whole time was a flesh-colored uh, cod piece. And the character was supposed to be sort of this, like, um, uh, like, too cool he's like chewing bubble gum like think like auto mechanic whatever and he just happens to find these like feather fans and he's doing a dance and it's like the covering it up and covering it up and covering it up and not showing and not showing and not showing and it was uh Todd, Todd, he did choreograph it and so this is not a testament to his choreography it was more a testament to my noviceness uh <laughs> terrible it was really <laughs> bad and it was so bad so that um uh, Toddy got a taboo buzzer and every time that I would accidentally show my crotch or ask before I, I was supposed to in the choreography he'd be like eh, eh, like over and over and over with the taboo buzzer so that's how I learned how to do a non-reveal fan dance oh my god I love that y'all are literally like TLC I say that a million times and then Hot Toddy officially is Pebbles the manager she's like <laughs> y'all doing it wrong it's from the top do it again do it again this is like every time he'd hit that buzzer. <laughs> I'm still very envious of the fact that you all as a group, I mean, Mod Carousel, there are other male burlesque troops, but I mean, you three are just like absurd. Absurdly talented, absurdly amazing, kind, awesome to party with. I think you're a little fucked up right now, probably. If I am a little fucked up right now. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, I don't give a Are shit. We We're talking about stripping. Is this still America? Um, I can I just tell them. Tell of course, I was gonna say it after I, the interview. Anyway, shortly before this interview. Look at him. He looks it. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm into doing shrooms. So. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, right now.
they have definitely kicked in and I'm I'm loving life and I'm loving you and I'm loving our audience. Oh my god, I live. Come on. I've never done mushrooms, so I'm not knowing totally where you're at, but you're filled with love right now. So damn that's absolutely am. That's kind of a good sell. That's a good yeah. sell, Bazooka Joe. Please uh D A R E y'all. This is a drug free America. Wait, is this actually an intervention? <laughs> no, b bitch, if this was an intervention, it would be you, Ray, and Jet interview intervention. Oh, yeah, Being like, you are a poor man's Jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a middle class person's Jeez Louise. You know, I'm not a horrible replica, but I'm not as good. You know, like you could tell. You could tell the taste is different. <laughs> uh, Bazooka, you are literally not only an amazing performer, but you're so involved in the community burlesque call of fame. You and uh, Midnight Martini just put on a amazing showcase for one of the weekends of the burlesque call of fame, the virtual versions this year. You and Midnight Martini are, I guess I'll say the poor man's Lolisbo. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would take that as a major compliment. <laughs> My favorite thing in the world, and I, you know, I am Team G's Louise. I'm to a fault. I can be a little bit, because sometimes y'all have a very, no, sometimes, you always have a very healthy uh, mindset of competition between each other. You talk a lot of shit to each other. It's very hard to decipher if you guys are being serious or not, unless you know each other. Right. But uh, my favorite moment from Burlesque Hall of Fame when you and Martini were trying to upstage Lolisbo hosting <laughs> was when you all got us up as an audience to stand up together and to just hold our hands. This I can't even say it. Can I say it? Because I feel like that's giving away something that happened I mean, magically. You can, you can say. I mean, it's by now. It's I think it's grown to um, slightly notorious uh, status. So there's. You can Absolutely give it away. <laughs> I believe there's a Vimeo video of it as well. I'm going to look that up. But you basically had us all stand up, put our hands like this, and then you brought the photographer on stage so it looked like you were getting a standing ovation. Oh. I mean, it didn't just look like we had a standing ovation. <laughs> we the had words that come to my mind. All the photos show a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> all the, the words that come to my mind are brilliant, never been done before, uh, one of a kind, impressive, uh, life changing. Why are you so brilliant, Bazooka Joe? Because we're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Which works perfectly in burlesque. Are you fucking? Yeah, kidding? exactly. Because <laughs> you do, you do build a love. Like you are like, if burlesque was a family, I would honestly put you as like the really probably too young, uh, parting as fuck uncle. Of burlesque i would i would absolutely 100 percent adopt that moniker <laughs> like i love the idea of first of all i love the idea of the community being a family but then i also love being like the younger cooler uncle to your dad or to your grandpa or whatever and it's <laughs> true like i don't just pushes you enough to get into a little bit of trouble but with like with enough like life lessons behind it to be and, like to be okay <laughs> and that's the part too where it's not just parting for party's sake there's always the bit of like i'm we'll take care of you but are you okay good okay bye yeah exactly <laughs> yes exactly and it's amazing i do miss you so much because honestly doing batman and robin with you like i told you a million times was a dream because everyone that knows me knows that all i want to do is be picked up in the air in front of thousands of people by batman and i would have no one else do it other than you I cannot wait to do this shit again in our lives. It'll happen. I actually almost wore the costume for this interview. <laughs> Bitch, I, I, I came this close to like putting putting all that on and then I got Do you all see how like there was a comedic moment and he fell asleep on it? Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. <laughs> that is I would have probably guessed so learned. hard. But for for in burlesque, how did you feel like throughout your journey of doing burlesque, do you feel like it's been treating you better over time? Do you feel like you want to try other avenues or is it just something where we kind of just see as it goes? Because it has grown crazy yeah. since you started. Uh, from now up until, you know, 2020, for obvious reasons, right. um, I loved seeing the growth of it. I love seeing more um, guys getting into it. I love seeing more 
gender bendy stuff and like everything in between i, I love that inclusion like the, the like drag like it, it keeps like bringing more and more in like adding people being able to uh, evolve and bring in new skills you know learning aerial or puppeteering or trying you know trying alter alter egos and and being able to do it that way um it's been it's been really and really incredible seeing like where I started, which was not too much for earlier than you were um, to where it is now and just seeing like how much it's grown and like, you know, you could pretty much go to any town now and see a show like it's it's everywhere, not just in the bigger cities. Um, and uh, it's festivals, uh, too. Yeah. And it's so, you know, I know everyone says it, but it's and it sounds cliche, but I mean, 100 percent body positive um everything about it like I, I still absolutely love it and i love being involved in everything too and you are can you tell us a little bit more about how you started and uh a little bit more about nose to the rhinestone yeah that, that was actually a, a project based off of being in a slump and uh knowing what it's like in chicago in february like uh it's real easy to get depressed and unmotivated uh and I just needed a kick in the pants and light a fire underneath myself. So I started News of the Rhinestone, and it was a 30-day challenge of putting in an hour's amount of work on anything. It could be anything. It could be choreography, act development, actually rhinestoning, costuming, or whatever, just, just so that you're constantly pushing yourself to, like, add in a little bit each day and documenting that, holding yourself accountable for it. And if you didn't do it, recording why like maybe you were sick or you just worked a lot or whatever but at least you had that record of like what what was going on in your life at that time and for me it worked and it turns out that it worked for a lot of other people so we kept it going kept it going kept it going for as long as people needed it right i didn't i didn't want to keep it going on just for the sake of having a gimmick but as right. long as people were feeling the need for it which now actually is probably a really good time to so thank you for mentioning it probably like a good time to kick that back in because so many people are feeling the drain the emotional drain and artistic drain of what 2020 turned out to be so uh yeah so that's that's it in a nutshell and do you uh do you feel like you lack inspiration on right now like what's next for bazooka is that even something that you can talk to us about yeah so uh, with um with the vertical side show we've got some now with the sort of the digital age of things coming um you know i did definitely go through and i, I think so many people did go through a slump uh april may june really hit hard and i yeah. feel like us coming out of this and creating um this uh s sense of storytelling that involves um video and acts and stuff but done in a way that's not just a straightforward like here's some story here's an act here's some story here's an act but it's going to involve some um puppeteering some original artwork some original music and putting it together uh and being released in sort of like a three-part series uh digitally uh and it's the telling of the mask of the red death uh which is very topical right now mm -hmm. so if, you're, if there's any gory sort of Edgar Allan Poe fans out there, that's that's what's next in line for me. Ooh, we love the arts of Bazooka Joe. Bazooka, I could literally have you on for the full hour, but I didn't book you for the full hour. Right. So unfortunately, this is a little bit, now we're getting close to the end of my time with you. But before I let you go, would you like to play a game with me? Absolutely. Ooh, -ne 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 -ne. let's play <laughs> Name That Stripper. Name that I got. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm an old man now. Sponsored by G's Louise. Look at this. He's so dreamy. Uh, you're going to, I have the comments on, turned on right now. So in case you need any help, because okay. Which I will. Knows, we need help all the time, especially if we're on shrooms. Uh, so the way that this game works is that I will show you a pixelated photo of a burlesque performer stripper. And you can let me know within 10 seconds whether or not you know who they are. And if you know them, anything. say that again. We'll try it. I'm ready. You'll be fine. Plus, the comments are on, so people in the chat can help you out. Uh, but don't worry. Basically, this whole moment is just so we can promote our friends. All right? You ready, right. Bazook? Let's do it. Here you go. This is your first one, Bazooka. Name that stripper. Oh, my God. I started hard. 
Who needs? I need more comments. The hair is a hint. I can also give you their location. That is the one thing I'll do for every performer. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. You want the location? I do need the location. New Orleans. New Orleans. Red hair. Pink. Colorblind pink. ass. Pink hair. Pink, pink red. Mm -mm. I need some help. Somebody chime in here. Nobody in the chat knows this. who this person is. I mean, the 10 seconds are up. Do you give up? Yeah, give it to me. It's Bella Blue. Oh, my God. What? Bella Blue of the New York, New York, New Orleans School of Burlesque, that hair, icon, that future hair legend. The that, that hair should have been the tip off. That's what I thought, but I started, I started hard, easy. So I tried that. Here, let's try a next one. Bazooka, name that stripper. Hmm. Mm hmm. I see skin tone. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The jacket. Doesn't look familiar. My mom said jeez, no way. Hmm. <laughs> There's no tattoos, right? Time's almost up. Ooh, what Tigger says SN. What does that mean? <laughs> Would it be uh, Samson Knight? Yes, it is Samson Knight's fine ass self. Ooh, look at this motherfucker. Just and wish I could gentleman that. through and through. Gentleman through and through. True, as I totally uh, am not a gentleman talking about. <laughs> um, very much so a gentleman. So, Bazooka, like, I'm going to... A little bit of, like... A little bit. I'm a little problematic. I'm going to bring on uh, three more. They're going to get hard, okay? So, okay. this one is uh, get... amazing. If you don't know this one, we will take your burlesque card. Please okay. name me. There are going to be two people in this one, okay? okay? So, please name me these ladies. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that the infamous Lolisbo? Jeez Louise and Lola Vanella of Lolisbo fame. Yes. What? Look at that photo. That's high fashion. I'm just trying to be in Lolisbo, Nito. Mm -hmm. Joe Nito? Lolisbo Nito? Does this work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I am so dumb. Okay, I'm going to now switch it up on you, okay? It's going to be a little bit harder. I'm going to show you baby pictures. Oh, God. And it's going to end very fun. So uh, please let me know who do you think this burlesque performer is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, is it your bestie, Jezebel? That is Jezebel Thunder. Yes. Wow. Look at you, Bazooka. You know everything about everything. Uh, she is friggin' adorable. Is that not, you know, I, when I did, had Mr. Gorgeous on, I had a baby photo of you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Or like a kid photo, and B Gorgeous could not figure that out. And it was... Uh, well, I looked very different at that time. I, went I still see it, but I can see how you look different. Okay, this last, okay. This last one's going to be about, uh, hopefully you'll get this one too. It's hard and easy, just like your host. So okay. please, Bazooka Joe, let me know if you can name that stripper. Oh, my God. Oh, those little bonito cheeks. I just Ooh. look at them. Is that you? That is Tito Bonito yeah. with Bazooka Joe before Bazooka Joe was Batman. Oh, my How did I know? God. Look at me with you. This is our first photo together. A little charmer. I, I probably was like, oh. <laughs> my mom is in the chat right now, so she could tell you what the hell I was doing. But Bazooka Joe, you. that was named that stripper. You killed that. Even on shrooms. <laughs> Maybe that's why I did so well. That's probably why you did so well, Bazooka. I love you so much. Thank you for joining us on the Tito Bonito Show. I hope we can have you back. We popped your Instagram live, Cherry. Yes, it was not nearly as hard as I thought it would be. That's what he said. <laughs> I'm just saying that I'm very honored that you uh, went out, just like Pochop, of Instagram Live and you joined us to do that. That shows me that you love me as much as I love. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, hello, everybody out there in the Instagram world. Yes, y'all, please go follow Bazooka Joe and show him some love, some Venmo love, okay? Because those hearts are cute, but dollar bills mean a little bit more now. I do need a new phone. 
Yeah. And not an iPhone 5, baby. What year is this? 1993? Plugged in the whole time because the battery wouldn't last long enough for this interview. <laughs> Well, now let's give your phone a breath, but I hope you can watch the rest of the show. And I love you so much, Bazooka. You are literally the shit. Have a good night. Thank you. You too, King. Bye. Bye. Oh, y'all, show some love to the amazing Bazooka Joe. What a dreamboat, y'all. What a talented, smart dreamboat, y'all. <sighs> Let me know if uh, you ever want to get married. I can figure it out. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Oh, Bazooka Joe. One more time, y'all. We love uh, some Bazooka Joe. Let's throw a little. <laughs> um, y'all, that was a good-ass time. That went by so quickly. I wanted to talk to him a little bit more, but Bazooka Joe was definitely one of my biggest inspirations. And y'all, like, please, if you want to get into burlesque, I highly encourage y'all to look up videos, especially nowadays, 10 years ago, there was a lot of videos on YouTube, but there still wasn't the amount of videos that there are now. So if you want to get into burlesque and you want to come up with a character and all of that, especially during this time, go watch some videos, go on Vimeo.com, look up the Burlesque Call of Fame, see all of those videos because they have them all throughout the years. And it is such a good watch, such good research. And continuously, there's new videos uploaded on YouTube. So I highly encourage you all to go check that out and uh, explore the sides of burlesque that you may not even know exist yet. Because I honestly had been, been seeing burlesque and didn't understand that men could do it until I saw the stage door Johnny's and Bazooka Joe's. So your future might just be right around the corner, y'all. Uh, now, I am very, very, I mean, I've been excited for this damn show. I'm so nervous this whole time. I will say really quick, before I bring on our next guest, I love to try this out. Last time it worked. Uh, so let's see if uh, we get croquetas this time. Which Cuban food am I? Croquetas, croquetas, noemis. Oop. Croquetas, listen, platanito looking ass. It's okay, we got croquetas last time, so we can't be uh, too greedy. But remember to go and check us out. Also, I will tell you who are going to be the special guests next week at the end of this show. So stick around, because let me tell you, we have someone, two people next week that are iconic and perfect, but one of them is making a dream come true for me. So if you want to find out who it is, please stay tuned to the end of the program and we're gonna have a good ass time now our next guest is most likely to get shut down by the law most unpredictable he is the first winner of the best boylesque award at the burlesque hall of fame he is literally our king of burlesque y'all we love him so much and he's such an icon coming to us live from new york city please put your phones on vibrate put it in between your legs and give it up for tigger <laughs> hey hi it worked i know look at that tigger is such a professional y'all we had tech <laughs> We got tech because Tigger doesn't understand tech at all. And uh, shout out to Bazooka. My phone is plugged in right now, too. Listen, um, mine is two and I have an 11, but you know, that's just how it's going to be sometimes. I thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I know we are uh, all experiencing a lot of things this year, uh, a lot of sadness, but I hope with this show and especially having people like you who have inspired me and, and for the for positive things, I hope that we can allow that to transfer into the audience uh, that is watching the show tonight. How are you doing today, though, Tigger? Um, well, as we were saying before, um, I was about to send out a saucy, dirty, funny little promo post for this show when I got the news about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and, um, uh, you know, uh, devastated and terrified and uh, abject and uh, crushed. But um, I have a loving husband who put on some Liberace and Judy Garland and gave me a weed cookie and made up a new bourbon cocktail. So you made the weed cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean to imply that you made me eat it. I picked it up and ate it. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so a, I am also kind of ripped, um, and, um, that helps, you know, 
tapped into my optimism for the motherfucking future that we've got to make happen. Yes, absolutely. And it's like, it, I do think, and we've talked about this a lot on this show with other burlesque performers, but it is one of these things as artists that we do have these ups and downs, these valleys all the time. I mean, obviously this one's pretty crazy, but it's like, it's just a little bit in, a little bit of like what's expected as artists. So I do think that people that create that as their lives are just like pretty much built to endure. And that's kind of like bittersweet to think about, but it's also kind of like powerful in a sense. Yeah. And well, honestly, it's, it's our job to change shit. I yep. go to show to be changed. Like trigger me, change me. I'm not okay. I'm not done. I demand that you make me in some way a different person than I was when I came in. Um, so it's on, it's our job to fucking, you know, whatever, do something. Get our messages out and make sure that, you know, people can be inspired because this is the thing, like, there's so many people that I know say stuff like at the end of the show, oh my God, that was amazing, life changing. And it's like, that's how we felt, I'm sure, when we first saw the performers that inspired us. And so Tigger, who inspired you to get into performance art? Was it just a multitude of people or was there like a force that like a time where you just were like, I need to get out there and speak? Um, really hard to say. My first word as a baby, because I was born in the 1960s, was go-go. Like as a baby, hungry, tired, wet, whatever, go-go, go-go. And I would like bust into my big sister's slumber parties wearing a diaper and put on her big white go-go boots and dance around for all the girls. And then I'd whip off my diapers and keep dancing. So basically I just never grew up. I uh, love it. I had my career plan set up way back when. And what was your first time being uh, over 18 performing in a club or bar or a theatrical setting? Like how did you find especially as the, one of the pioneers, if not the pioneer of male burlesque, like how did you, I know that a lot of burlesque performers back in the day necessarily didn't call it that. So how did that, how did that start for you? Uh, gosh, short form, theater, all, uh, my efforts, uh, stoned and drunk efforts at short form. Uh, theater all my life, all my life, all my life. Um, and uh, found by the time I moved to New York in the 80s, and I very quickly uh, was getting naked in place. Um, one, because I guess that's just me, I get naked. Uh, but two, because I just wanted to push that button. I just kept picking up on how even so-called provocative art makers were provoked with nudity. And it's like, we all have it. We all see it all the time. We think about it all the time. And yet it's still like, touches something and I was like ooh ooh I wanna so I would be doing whatever Brecht or Shakespeare and it's like I'd be like what if I did this scene naked um and then there was kind of like a little as we all get frustration uh, which is an excellent engine for new ideas I was frustrated with like downtown theater performing for people who are already thought like us mm -hmm. um and so as a lark I just wanted to jump in and just do shit in a bar, in the back of a bar when someone didn't even know there was going to be a show. Just yeah. um, and there were wonderful, fabulous people doing shit like that. That wasn't brand new out of my head. But I'd finish my arty play and I would go see drag and I'd go see stripper girlfriends and I would go see circus and Bindlestiff Family Circus would like do these, just show up and various other friends. They would just like suddenly be eating fire laying on the bar. And queens would be like, ah, ah, trying to get their cocktail while Otter's like singeing her pussy hairs. And anyway, yes. uh, so in the midst of that, when those circus folks wanted me to jump in, I thought, well, uh, no one's going to want to hear my checkoff monologue. You just, you know, like ate fire. Um, so I guess I'll get naked. So that kind of sort of is how I found myself doing it. And I thought I, I didn't, burlesque wasn't a word. I was, or that was around in our parlance. Uh, you know, I saw a gypsy and it changed my life because I'm not made of stone. <laughs> I, I didn't get that I was doing that. I pictured glamorous ladies back in the day and, and I'm not a 
lady, exactly, and I ain't glamorous. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I was just kind of making up strip performance art, little mini naked theater pieces to make people laugh and hide the politics inside the sex and the comedy, because the sex is a ruse to get people to watch. And then you do whatever the fuck you want to them. I love that. And then how did you feel having a moment like winning Best Boy Less and being the first male to do it? And also even just being in like the top 50 burlesque performers and being the only solo male. Like how did you feel? Did, is that something that humbled you? Or was it just kind of like not as important to you to have accolades like that? Uh, 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 well, we're all, I mean, we're performing, we take our clothes off in front of strangers in the desperate hope that they'll clap. So obviously we are all great big black holes of human need, um, you know, craving affirmation constantly. So obviously I like that stuff. Uh, and I have mixed feelings about it and it's weird. I, none of us ever make, I hope, make this shit up thinking about that yeah you, know, you make it up it was a lark i was like woohoo i'll just get naked in the back of a bar i never thought i'd be doing it getting naked for 30 almost 30 years wait 1991 i started getting naked whatever anyway um yeah coming up on 30 years of doing this shit uh, <laughs> what do you you got you have to celebrate 30 your 30th anniversary yeah, yeah anyway. i mean you don't have to do anything you don't want to <laughs> obviously uh, I'll, I'll I, as a matter of fact, um, cheers to that. To cheers. Listen, all I have is some water that it's not even from this original bottle. I had to refill it. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's vodka. That water bottle is it? It's it's vodka, y'all. It's, oh, it's only vodka, y'all. Like, let's be real about it. Um, anyway, whatever. So you know, you just make shows, and I was very conscious that I was doing. Um, so-called women's work. You know, it was girlfriends getting naked and I wanted to do that. Like that kind of feminist idea was in there. I wanted to be a guy getting naked where people are thinking they're gonna see a girl and like not know what to do with it, but they have to deal with it or whatever, all that. I wanted a man to be put into that position, but I also probably wanted to get the fuck out of this world that is a patriarchy. And I really, I mean, women save our lives in a million ways, badass women, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to move into a world that's run by a woman's art form and just be one of the girls. So like being a guy for my personal politics was a thing, but it was never anything we talked about with the acts. Like me and Julie, and, like whatever, I got opinions, you got a pussy, we got a show, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't until I started to see other men. I knew my politics and my reasons, but when I saw Rocky Roulette from San Francisco and then the evil tap dancing hate monkey, who later abridged his name a bit, uh, you know, I started, when I started to see these other early boyless performers, it was like, oh, damn. It became a bigger cause. More important, you know, whatever. It's not just me that we're supposed to be laughing at sex and sexuality to remove some of the oppression of it and and whatever a million reasons but we're doing that and we should be exploding gender stereotypes and how can you do that unless you hear from all the genders not just two um, and it's also utterly ridiculous that we still give out awards for best actor and best actress because it's all performance so i mean i believe that we were supposed to change the term to just actor, right? So it's like, how does that not translate into the awards? Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I mean, if, if we're doing that, I get it, for less Call of Fame, I get it, and I bitched about it on stage there, bitched. Noted that it's absurd to give a shit about someone's gender at home or one of their genders or whatever, uh, and create a category, but I get more categories is more show, and we're all in show business. But in which case, let's make as many categories and make all of them as broad and blur all those fucking lines. And my favorite art of every kind, I always have to stop and say, what was that? It's kind of this, but it's that. You know, all of the above is my favorite 
I love that. Do you feel like, because as burlesque has grown in the last like two decades, three decades, do you feel like it's something that we just as Americans who have constantly repressed our own sexuality and had that happen to us by the powers that be, do you feel like it's just something that isn't going to go away? Uh, Even with all of this year happening, which a lot of people fear like a lot of art forms will be gone but do you think like the power of the internet the power of just people wanting to uh respond to the fact that we do care so much about sexuality and not enough about violence and we like prioritize one over the other um i love all of the, the struggle uh and it's it will never be over it will never be over we will never win uh, uh recent history has shown us like progress is not inevitable, unspeakable horrors can return. Uh, so it's everyone's job as a human being to like work on making the world better. And if you know a particular, you know, issue because you live with it, maybe kick down that door first, like don't stop there. Um, so I don't know, that's, that's just our jobs. I love that because I do think that it, it is us like we do have and hopefully this amount of time will allow us to really think about what's important in our lives. And I kind of feel like I hear that a lot with my mogul friends where they're just finally understanding how things just are put in place that don't really necessarily make sense. But yet we do it because we just have been complacent and we've been like as long as we're OK and our families are OK, we don't care. And then it's like now that it's not what how do you move forward from that? And I hope that we all can ask that and consciously, like you said, just make sure we make actions to actually change for the better. Yeah, that's that's, the that's the America. Say that again, sorry. I just, uh, something that always gives me hope is pretty much every time um, queers and badass broads get together, good shit happens. Um, Very true. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. We need to put that on a shirt for real. Oh, Tigger. So what is, do you have like a crazy before? I want to play, a, I want to play Name That Stripper with you because I have a lot of strippers to name today. But I always wanted to ask you this because, sorry, say that again. I was just, I didn't know it would be a quiz game. I got nervous when you did it to Bazooka, but I got It'll like three of them right. <laughs> no, and you actually, like the ones he got wrong, you already knew. Easy, easy. Then I it's going to be super easy. It's going to be fun. But uh, are there any crazy backstage memories that just stick out in your mind of just like some of your favorite memories in the last like all this time? In the last all this time? Oh my God. I can't imagine all the backstage memories. Um, I remember backstage conversations uh, between uh, Juliet Atlas Muse before she made Mr. Pussy an onstage character pulling at her pussy hairs and making him talk. And he was man, so I would respond with my penis and as my, my puppet. And he talked, so my penis would talk with the lady's voice and whatever, we would just have our little conversations backstage with our genitals. That was nice. Uh, um, I fucking love, love, I think the last time at B Hop I was sharing a dressing room was just me and Trina Parks. Uh, we love Trina Parks. You know, make up next to Satan's Angel um, for birthday today. It's today, yes. <laughs> Happy birthday to Satan's Angel, y'all. Anytime you can do that. Mm. Like, that is really vodka. Tapping and scratching and, and, you know, whatever. Talking about STDs or whatever. You know, glamour stuff. Um, yeah. Uh I love that. I cannot wait to get back to that. I know that I will be patient, but I cannot wait to get back to that. Uh, we will, we will. That's, that's home. That's my yeah. sanctuary. It's literally, that's the perfect word for it. It's sanctuary. And honestly, I know like every time I'm nervous, because I'm still nervous every time I perform, but every time I walk backstage, even just a little bit, it goes down. Because I just feel like these are our people. This is like the safety net to whatever happens on stage, off stage, but it's like that backstage is church. Yeah. yeah. And I love that. Oh, Tigger, do you want to 
play Name That Stripper with me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Boom, 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 boom. This is sound effects sponsored by G's motherfucking Louise. That's supposed to be her face. Uh, this is Name That Stripper, so I'm going to yeah. say that again. Nice, no, your boost, yeah. <laughs> She's literally killing the game. She. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to show you some pixelated performers. Uh, and you will just let me know. I'm going to turn on the comments so people in the chat can help you out. Please help out Tigger. And uh, there will be one photo of a baby, which I don't know if you'll be able to guess, but maybe, I don't know. People have before and they've definitely surprised me. Okay. So we're, we're going to start off really easy. Uh, Tigger, my love, my light. Name that stripper. Uh, that's my girl, Dirty. Hey, Dirty Martini in the house, looking gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely. See, you're going to be amazing. And remember, the prize for getting them all right is bragging rights. We don't got a budget here. We're not on NBC. We don't got none of that. Can't do that. All right. Our... All of us are making from show business these days is bragging rights. You know, that's, that's bragging rights burlesque review coming soon. Uh, <laughs> Tigger, name that stripper. Girl Noir. I didn't even give him a cheat sheet, y'all. He's just educated. Well, and their family. You know, that helps. Very true. I also, I'm, I'm picking people that we could just promote and love and, and show everyone how much we love them because they're not only amazing performers like yourselves, they're also really good people and their family. Oh, my uh, God. Oh my so God. Like, as much as Dirty was born to be a performer, Dirty as a fucking friend is that much more amazing. Anyway. Yes. And I, and I couldn't agree with that because as Jeezy, me and Jeezy both were friends before Burlesque. So now understanding 14 years, it's like, it just mind, it boggles my mind, but it makes me just appreciate how important Burlesque is to my life and just in general. But, oh my God, okay, let's not get sappy. Yeah. Yeah. Loving them. Loving them. All right, this is going to be two performers. This is super easy. So uh, let's just brag about them. Who are these strippers? Hello. Yes, Kitten and Lude from New Orleans and Seattle and everywhere else in the fucking world. Yes, God. We also love, uh, we love both of them, but shout out to Lou Henry Hoover for also being the first woman to win Best Boy Lesk. Cheers. That was that, to exploding those categories and blurring the lines. Yes, and fucking making it just like being one of the first. It's amazing. Oh, we fucking love Kinnan and Lou so fucking much. Okay, we got uh, three more. So yeah. now we are going to present a legend. And uh, you let me know who it is. So please, Tigger, name me this Thank legend. You. Hey, Cuban burlesque star Marinka, who just released a book from Havana to burlesque. So we will put a, say that again. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. I know mine is in the mail, so I can't wait, and I'll put a pre-order link in the comments so you all can uh, get a copy of it yourselves. Uh, all right, all right, here we go. Let's name, yeah, we can name two more. Okay, this one's going to be, <laughs> this one might be hard, so don't worry, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a baby photo of someone that we love. It's plenty of times. I can fail at a, at a game show. Yeah, you know what? Here we go. Name, name me that stripper. Oh my God. Those eyes are so good. I feel like I should know. When you tell me, I'm going to feel like a real idiot. No way, because this person to me doesn't look anything like this. It is a boy person? Yes. It is a male identifying person, yes. Identifying still. Okay. Say that again? Still a male identifying person. Because, you know, life's full of surprises. Um, is it a still a blonde person? Mm, no, but the hair is really unimportant to this person. Is it hot toddy? No! <laughs> you give up? Yes. Uh, Sucreal Cream. I'm saying that name totally wrong. If you think you know, put it in the comments. Help Tigger. Emma? Say it again. Oop. A la creme? No. No, it's not. They're just in the comments saying, I think I know. I was like, that can't be no. And also... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this person is... I can give you their location, which will help a little bit more. Seattle, Washington. No, it's not Matt Frazier. 
Waxy? It is Waxy Moon! Wow! Oh, can you believe this cutie? Oh, I've never Ooh. seen childhood photos. Oh. I worked, when I worked with Kitten and Lou in Camptacular for a year, for a summer, uh, I, for my contact photos on my phone, I always ask people to send me baby pictures of themselves. So I have a slew of baby photos. That is awesome. Um, is okay. Hey, quick bragging rights. I got to um, get Waxy to do his first on stage full frontal nudity. Ooh. Uh, 2006. That's amazing. Hell yeah. Look at that. Look. See? Yeah. And that, I mean, I would have never, I've ever guessed this, ever. I would have just, like, and you figured it fucking out without any help from any of y'all in the fucking comments. All right, one more. You want one more before we have to go? Sure. Perfect. This one we've already mentioned earlier, so let's shout them out again. Please name me this iconic legend stripper. That is Satan's angel. Yes. I mean, it blocks off right here, but Satan's angel. Uh, Happy birthday to Satan's angel. We love you and miss you so much. I'm raising a little more bourbon to you, Satan. Always, especially tonight. Tonight is Satan's night. So I love you so much. That was... Name that stripper, Tigger. You got them all right. Da -da -da -da. Bragging rights to Tigger. I will send you $5 on Venmo just for getting them all fucking right. <laughs> then I'll send you $5 back for you'll come up with something. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll send you a tassels on my butt video. Yeah, Tigger, yeah. would you like to promote or say anything before you go? Oh, uh, my gosh. So many, uh, what's, what, what all, uh, New York Burlesque Festival is happening very, very soon, October 1st through 3rd. Um, uh, so check that out. Um, I'll be a guest on Angie Pontani's Bump and Grind on September 28th, I think. And I think October 1st for New York Burlesque Fest. And, oh, and, and, I'm, and well, I'm going to work on this weird play next month and we can't get together. So this company, Talking Band, is going to mail me costume pieces and prompts, and then I'm going to make up a character and scenes, and I'm going to send those to them, and then they're going to write a play. Anyway, we're going to make a play together. Ooh, Which that's exciting as hell. The game show. It's going to be fun. Anyway. Oh, my God. I'm very excited to see Tigger. I love you so much. Thank you. It's such an honor to have you on this show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, no, and anytime you want to come back, I could talk to you both forever. So I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to, especially your Friday night, to hang out with us. Show some love to Tigger, everybody. And so you just have to prove to me you said you weren't going to wear pants. Prove oh, yeah, that's right. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wait. Here, uh, oh, okay. There's. Uh, uh, am I showing like. Oh, uh, uh, anyway. Yeah. Eh, look, I would get kicked off for Instagram for you, Tigger. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, uh, we're just proving that I wasn't wearing pants, and I think <laughs> all I prove. Oh my god, you, I love. If, oh, I was gonna say you don't know if I'm circumcised, but if you've been to one of my shows, yes, you do. So never yeah, mind. I, do. I can do it off of the scent too. I can, and no. That'll do it. That'll do it. I love you, Tigger. Have a great night. You are the shit. Mwah. Have fun with that weed cooking. Thanks. Bye, baby. Bye. Love Oh, Tigger, the amazing T I double G or T T F N, ta ta for now, Tigger, the icon. We are so excited to have these amazing male burlesque pioneers join us. I am so honored. And with that, I will say that our next week's guests are very, very special, y'all. So if you want, remember every Friday night here on Instagram Live, you can watch the Tito Bonito show we have. Upcoming guests planned out till November, and they are different. But next week, y'all, I'm going to be emotional. Next week, we have my childhood shiro, Lisa Lefty Lopez's little sister, Raindrop Lopez, on the show. I'm going to be so nervous, y'all. We're going to talk about Lisa. We're going to talk about Raindrop. We're going to talk about everything. And I am so excited to have her. You do not understand how important this is. It is going to be the shit. We have Raindrop Lopez next week on the Tito Bonito Show. And we also have my bestie, Jeez Louise, who I call the Lisa Left Eye Lopez of Burlesque, 
on the show as well. So it is going to be an amazing show. And I hope you all can tune in. Remember, we keep our shows on IGTV as well as on my YouTube channel. So if you want to follow me and support me, please check out the link in my Instagram bio. And uh, there's multiple ways to support me. Also, uh, why are you saying boo, Bazooka Joe? Why, like, this show just... I'm so honored that all of you want to do this. Uh, and when I do eventually have a late night talk show, y'all better act like you're going to be there, right? You're going to be my special guest. You're going to be my musical guests up in that. So, uh, oh, you're saying boo to G's Louise Bazooka Joe. Why are you so problematic? Why do you hate the number one burlesque performer in the world? Why, Bazooka? Why? Why? Uh, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. That is my time. Uh, before I go, remember, please save the date. We have the Pansy Craze Peep Show, uh, which is going to be an amazing showcase. We have uh, Charles Galen, Diana, Jezebel Thunder, Jeez Louise, Pixie Aventura, Redbone, Griefy Royalty, Sergeant DeWise, uh, Stevie Minx, Willie LeCue. We have a multitude of burlesque and drag performers. So please make sure with uh, DJ Addiction providing us some beats in the beginning and after. So it's going to be an all night party on Sunday, September 27th. So please make sure to check us out. I love you all. If you enjoyed the show tonight, you can throw me some Venmos. It's pinned in the comments, some cash apps some PayPal because I never make a dollar doing this fucking show. Uh, and if you don't want to support me, at least support the special guests that I have on the show who are incredible artists and we love them so much. So thank you all for watching now and later. Uh, I am your host, Tito Bonito, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Show some love. Bye. Remember to make sure you check out my website, titobonito.com. I'm gonna get a live band soon. It's Tito Bonito, the Tito Bonito Show. We got guests, laughs, games, and a bunch of stuff. We got some. Wow, I just made that up right now. Okay, y'all, for some reason, this is going longer than an hour, so that's dope as shit. I love you all. Make good choices. I worry about you. Good night, and have a great weekend.